Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the pseudo random number generator PRNG. Let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, we will understand the need for having pseudo random sequence, and outcome number two, we will know how pseudo random numbers can be generated using pseudo random number generator. Let's dive into the topic of the day, the pseudo random number generator. Before understanding about randomness, let's take a scenario. Let's say there is a key stream generator, where this key stream generator is going to generate random numbers. For example, if we are giving an input, this input that we are giving to the key stream generator is referred as a seed or key. Let's assume this is a key that is given as an input to this key stream generator. Now what the key stream generator is going to do? It is going to generate a key stream. Now what this key stream is going to contain? This key stream is going to generate a sequence of bits. Obviously they are going to be zeros and ones. Now what has actually happened is the key stream generator has taken a key or a seed and it has generated a sequence of bits which are expected to be random in nature. I'll put my question this way. Is it truly random? I mean, is the numbers are completely random? For this, the answer is no. Because only physical world can have complete randomness or truly randomness. Say, if you take an entity in the physical world, it may be a tree or forest or sky or universe or whatever entity you want to take, but take the example from the physical world only. In physical world, we can witness random fluctuations everywhere. And we can generate truly random numbers by measuring these random fluctuations known as noise. When we sample this noise, then we can get some numbers and these numbers are truly random. Why? Because the next value will be unpredictable. Because this randomness that is generated by the physical world is non-deterministic. The next value or the next move is unpredictable. And that is why we refer this randomness that is generated by the physical world is non-deterministic and it is truly random. But this key stream generator that we are talking about in computers, they are actually generated by machines. And the numbers or random numbers that are generated by these machines or the key stream generator performed by the machine, they are predictable and they are deterministic. We need truly random numbers in order to achieve perfect secrecy. Isn't it? Now it's clear that what we generate from the machines are not truly random. Then what kind of randomness it is? It should be close enough to the truly randomness. Then we call it as pseudo randomness because this randomness will be repeating itself. There will be a period the length of the randomness will be repeated. For example, if we have 1000 bits that are random and if the next 1000 bits are the same as that of the previous 1000 bits, then it means the randomness is repeated and we cannot call this as truly random and we need to call it as pseudo random. So what we understood from this is that when we input a seed or a key, then this is accepted by the key stream generator and it produces a key stream which is expected to be random. To be precise, they are pseudo random. Now how far they are random? It is actually depending on the size of the key. If you give a bigger key size or a larger key size, then the randomness is also a larger randomness. The larger the key size or the seed size, the randomness will be larger. Let's see the theoretical aspects now. Basically, we are talking about stream ciphers. Basically, it's going to contain a binary sequence which contains zeros and ones. So we are talking about stream cipher. In stream cipher, we are going to use the key stream generator and what this key stream generator is going to do. That's what we have seen previously. It's going to take a key or a seed as an input and it is going to generate a sequence of output which is expected to be random. But is it truly random? No, we cannot say that it will be a truly random sequence because there will be repetitions of the sequence. And that is why we cannot guarantee that the key stream that is generated by the machines are truly random. Then what kind of randomness it is? It is pseudo random. We will understand things with an example. Let's bring in our popular characters. Let's say we have Alice here and we have Bob here. Now what Alice and Bob are going to do is that they are going to use a stream cipher and they are going to exchange the messages. 
Obviously, if it is a stream cipher, then XOR operation is going to be carried out and they will have the plain text which is XOR with the key and we get the cipher text. Now, what is the key here? The key is the output they get from the key stream generator, what we have discussed recently. Let's say Alice is actually wanted to send cipher text to Bob because she doesn't want to send the plain text. So what she is doing is that she is taking the plain text sequence. Let's say x1, x2, x3, x4, all these are bits. This may be 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So some sequence of zeros and ones as the plain text. Now what she is going to do is she is going to generate the key stream. How she will be doing that? She will be taking a key stream generator. She will be giving the input seed to the key stream generator and that key stream generator will be giving the random sequence. Now all the random sequence bits are placed here and she is going to perform an XOR operation between X1 and K1. The XOR between X1 and K1 will be Y1. This is a binary bit. Likewise, when she performs the XOR operation for all the bits, she will be getting a sequence of bits which we call as the ciphertext stream. Now this ciphertext stream is actually generated by Alice and it is then given to Bob. Now how Bob will get the plain text back? Now Bob is going to adopt the same method. He is also bringing the same key stream generator that was used by Alice and Bob needs to give the same key or the seed that Alice has fed into the machine in order to generate this sequence, this K1, K2, K3, isn't it? So please be noted that Bob is using the same key stream generator He's going to give the same input key or the seed what Alice has given in order to generate the same sequence because he also needs the same sequence in order to get the plain text back. How Bob will be getting the plain text? He received the cipher text stream, isn't it? So Y1, Y2, Y3 up to Yn. He has received all the cipher text streams. He is going to generate the key streams with the help of the key stream generator by inputting the seed or the key, the same key which is used by both Alice and Bob and he will be getting the plain text back. How? A simple XOR operation again because when you XOR the cipher text with the key stream, it gives back the plain text, isn't it? So this is actually now done by Bob. Now Bob is able to generate the plain text back even though we are using the randomness as the key. This is possible only when the input key or the seed is known to both Alice and Bob. When the input or seed is given to the key stream generator, it gives the same random sequence and this random sequence cannot be truly random. It is pseudo random because this random sequence will be repeatable after the period ends. So the next period will be having the same set of sequence as the previous period. Let's come to the theoretical points. What operation we did previously? We are taking the plain text bit xi. This xi is XORed with the key stream bit ki in order to generate the cipher text bit yi. So what happened? In the encryption, the xi bit is XORed with the ki bit in order to generate yi. And what is the decryption part? We will be getting xi by merely XORing this yi with the key bit ki. When we generate this key stream which is non-repeatable, then only we will call this ki as a truly random bit. When we have such kind of truly random sequence in our algorithm, then this kind of stream cipher is referred to as a one-time pad which is referred to as perfect secrecy. I hope you can recollect the things which we have dealt in the chapter 1, the Shannon's notion of perfect secrecy. And this one time pad that what we are getting using this kind of algorithm is referred as perfect secrecy. But remember, in reality, we need to understand whether what we are getting is truly random or pseudo random. Let's see the theoretical points now. So we have already seen about the stream cipher, the key stream generator and the truly random sequence. When we will call this as a truly random sequence, obviously we are going to have only two bits in our sequence. One is zero and other one is one. So the probability of the number of zeros is equal to the probability of number of ones. So this should be one of the important criteria for being a truly random sequence. Because the number of zeros and number of ones are used equally. At the same time, when we have such concept, then our algorithm is actually following the Shannon's notion of perfect secrecy. But do you think it is practically possible to generate a truly random sequence? Generating a truly random sequence is impractical. We are getting this randomness from machines where machines are predictable and deterministic. We want truly random sequence, but we are ending up with the pseudo random sequence. But what we expect is 
This pseudo random sequence or a good stream cipher should be close to the truly random sequence. Though we are not able to get the exact truly random sequence, so when we get such kind of randomness, then this is good enough for achieving better security. Let's say we have generated a random sequence through a pseudo random generator. Now the important question is how to measure this randomness? How to confirm that there is complete randomness with the sequence that we have obtained from the pseudo random number generator? So that's what we are going to see in the next lecture. So anyway, from this lecture, we understood that pseudo random number generator generates a random sequence and this is going to be used for achieving security. And this pseudo random number generator is going to be used by both sender and the receiver. The only thing is they need to mutually agree upon the common key or the seed. Only when they use the same seed, they will be getting the same random sequence. And also we confirmed that randomness is inevitable as far as security is concerned. In order to achieve the Shannon's notion of perfect secrecy, no other go, we need randomness. But the thing is, whether it is truly random or pseudo random. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the need for having pseudo random sequence. And we also have come to know how pseudo random numbers can be generated using pseudo random number generator. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.